Okay. Hello everyone, uh, it's Eli here. I'm going to um, just go over some interesting tricks to replace a head on Mount Rushmore. Um, of course, no disrespect to um, George Washington, but I, I will be replacing um, George Washington's head. I actually got asked to do this as a, as a job and um, I thought it was very interesting um, a, a job to do. Um, you can apply this to many other formations or many other styles. It doesn't have to be rock, it could be anything. But how to replace a head. And this will even teach you how to replace head on individuals uh, because similar philosophies uh, apply. So, um, in the one that I did for a particular individual, um, they asked for um, the heads to be replaced by the heads of um, various, I guess, leaders of the world. And one of them was Donald Trump. Um, this was the image that was supplied. So I'm going to reuse the same image um, for artistic purposes. I want you to see and learn a thing or two about how to do these sorts of things. So, the way this works. Uh, first, we want to cut out Donald Trump's head from, from the background. So, let's just get everything out of the way here. Um, there's a neat little trick when you, when you choose this selection tool. Um, you can hold and drag down and it selects and it increases the threshold of your selection. So that's sufficient for me. There you go. Let's cut all of that part of his head out now. I can see some of his cheeks gone. That's fine. We can take care of that later. Um, okay, I'm going to cut all that out. I'm going to cut that out. This, this, and certainly these. Now the rest I can do just with the scissors tool, but it's saved me a bit of time doing it the way I just illustrated. Okay, zooming in. Whoops, I'll get rid of that first. And I'll get rid of these things here. Okay, that's good. Now I want to fix up this cheek, easy. Um, just grab the warp tool and drag it out, make the hardness low. It's going to end up being a rock, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but um, I should do. I'll just fix up the top of the head as well. Um, you can see that that's the boundary of that layer is, um, you know, blocked off at the top here. So I can't exactly use the warp tool to push that out. But what you can do is, um, under the view, um, menu, uh, was it, is it the view? No, sorry. Under the layer, there is a option that says, um, fit layer to, um, image size, or layer, layer to image size. And when you click that, what it does is it stretches the layer to be the image size. It's a very handle quick, sorry, it's a very handy uh, quick shortcut to be able to do that. So I'm just going to push, pull that out a little bit just to make it look, I mean, that's going to end up being a rock. So again, it doesn't have to be exactly um, perfect, but push that down a bit, push that down a bit. Okay. All right, let's bring it over. I'm going to paste it in here. Now, the most important thing about doing head replacements is get the lighting correct. Again, get the lighting correct because um, if the original photo had, uh, and that's the background one I'm referring to, if the original photo has strong lighting, sunny lighting, spot lighting, it has to be the same in the um, image that you're sourcing the head from. So you can see 
both have a strong spotlight, one being, I think a spotlight in this case, one being the sun, but both of them have it on the side of the head. So what we have to do, that works because we have to just um, flip that horizontally. Under layer transform, there's a uh, flip horizontal function. But beyond that, uh, you can use this tool, uh, the rotate tool, and we can get the rotation of a similar, similar angle. Okay. Now, let's stretch this and make it an appropriate size. There you go. Now it's going to fit around there somewhere. Um, I'm going to make it a little bit transparent just for visibility purposes. Okay, It helps helps making it 50% transparent so you can get the placement right. What I'm looking at at the moment is getting George Washington's chin to line up with um, there we go getting the chins to line up. So Donald Trump's chin lines up with George Washington's chin. Uh, you can see the sun where the sun shines and the light shines is very, very compatible. The next thing is we want to grayscale this. There's a number of ways to do it because the rocks are grayscale, but um, if you don't want to get perfect gray, um, sometimes the rocks can be a little bit of a color. The next best tool is colorize. You have under colors, you have a colorize option. Uh, you probably can't see this window, this dialog window because I'm only sharing the GIMP window itself but um, there's a hue toggle and that lets me change the hue to whatever I want as well as the saturation. So if I bring down the saturation all the way down or close to all the way down, just leave a little bit of color left, you can see that I can then choose the right color. So I think it's, I'd like to be somewhere around like to be somewhere around there. Maybe a little bit more color. Okay. That's almost completely grayscale. Now, the next part, you can see that's a little bit dark. So first thing I'll look at, I'll say, all right, well, that's a little bit dark. So we want to lighten it. Again, under, under the colorize option, if I go back there, uh, I'm just going to put the same kind of approximate settings on again. Um, there was, there's a hue, there's a saturation, and there's a lightness. So I can actually affect the lightness and make it lighter as such. That already blends in um, with the other rocks. I didn't have to do much. It already is taking shape. But there's more we can do. And what I'm going to focus on is, see, the color of the head is consistent with the rock here, but it's not consistent with the rock on the left-hand side. So I'm going to choose the uh, lasso tool. I'm going to put a strong feather on that, maybe about 40. And I'm going to select this side of the head. Okay, selected. And I'm going to colorize that to be more consistent with this side. So again, from colors, I'm choosing colorize. Um, again, you probably can't see this dialog box, but all I have is hue, and I'm going to make it more of a yellow tinge. Then I'm going to bring the saturation all the way down. Okay, there's a bit of a yellowy tinge there going on. So this part is a bit more consistent. Now, there is a bit of a border happening here, which we need to get rid of. And that's, again, very, very easy to get rid of. Again, use the lasso tool, a lot less feathering. Firstly, I'm just going to correct this part so that there is no border there. Okay, I'm just cutting out just that top part. Okay, so looks a bit more rocky now. Um, now, we're going to get the erase tool and use a 
feathered brush and just cut into actually I'm not going to cut up there I'm just going to cut into the side there like that as such that's interesting what it did with the eye you see that and that was all because of the alignment so I can kind of align it like that okay because again of the alignment, I'm able to align the original cheek and I know I aligned the um, chin before as well so I can actually use the original chin which casts a shadow that makes it look a lot more realistic now I'm going to reduce the opacity of the arrays down to about 30% because I want to erase very lightly to bring out some of the texture of the original rock. I'm going to get rid of that though. Okay, I want to get back some of the original texture. Now those stray hairs, they're not going to work very well in this particular scenario. Okay. Let me just see how that's going to look. That's gotten rid of his hair. It's made him bald. So I don't like that. I'm going to restore the um, original stuff we had there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the um, warp tool and I'm going to lift that up to cover the original rock formation. Okay. Okay, but, however, it's supposed to be a lot brighter there. So to make it bright, um, I'm going to use the um, dodge and burn tool. I'm going to say dodge. I want to dodge this part because this part is supposed to be bright. Okay, that's too feathered for my liking, so I'm just going to make it a bit more, increase the hardness there. Okay. Look, if I if I zoom out of that, it 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 looks reasonably consistent and reasonably good. Um, so, really, I mean, the other thing is what you got to look out for is these really dark spots. If I have a look at some of these images, there are no real dark spots. Maybe in the eyes here, but that's in very very shadowy areas. In here. If I don't like the way that shadow looks, well, I can just copy the eye from here and just do a copy and paste. So there you go, copy eye, copy, paste. Actually, what did I do wrong there? I, um, the radius was way too high, so I'm just gonna redo that copy. just as an example so you can see what this ends up looking like whoops okay that's not showing because I didn't have the correct layer um, selected very common problem with um, when you when you're cutting things out I'm sure you have the right layer selected um, uh, let me move that up one layer okay so there's the new eye there and uh, let's increase the brightness um, levels levels is a good way under colors levels is a good way to increase the lightness of something okay um, you can see the color is a little bit off so again we can use colorize and fix that no problem at all Yeah, already fixed. Um, so that lightens the eyeball to be more consistent with the, um, and you know, 
I can just duplicate that layer and just put it on the other side as well in the same in the same vein. I'm going to rotate it a little bit. Okay. Probably make it a little bit more grayscale than the other one. So saturation I'm just going to lower heavily. Okay. So now the eyes look a little bit more statuesque, if you like. Um, the nose is a lot light, darker than, than over here. So what you want to do is, again, just look for these little inconsistencies and fix them up as you go along. Um, but to, to lighten that up, I just go dodge uh, mid-tones or shadows even. Dodge the shadows and a couple of clicks, it's fixed. Just gonna make it um, a little bit more feathered. There you go. Now, Donald Trump is no spring chicken, so he's got a lot of um, his skin kind of helps with the rock formation. If you know, you're using a very, very smooth face, and then you want to, then what you want to do is grab some texture from under, from underneath, and uh, a good idea is to kind of erase lightly, so you put opacity on the, on the erasure, so that it brings out some of the textures from underneath. Another really good trick to do is, which I will show you right now, is I'm just going to um, create a new layer from visible. So that's just created a new layer here from everything that is visible on screen. Then what I can do is use the healing tool and grab my, let's say I'm going to grab the source of the texture from here and apply it. Now I'm going to put some opacity on because I don't want to make the texture 100% the same, but check this out. Oh, you see how the face is starting to take on some, look at that. See how the texture of the now, I think I should use some up here, okay? Now, you can see that that's starting to look a lot more rocky. I, I'm going to use some from here. You can use it from wherever you, you see fit. Okay, look, you know, that's good enough for the purposes of this tutorial um, spend more time on it but again uh, I actually preferred the face as it was like this it seemed to be uh, just more accurate reflecting um, Donald Trump but you see that's how you do it um, so if you do want to do want to do head replacements the keys to remember are the source image that and the source image that you use and the destination image that you use have to have consistent lighting. If the lighting is coming from the left, then uh, but your other one has lighting coming from the right, then you want to flip one of those over so that it becomes consistent. Do not ever put try and replace a head that has. Um, shadows or hard lighting with something that's got diffused lighting. If something's got diffused lighting, use something else that's got diffused lighting. So that's what I mean by the consistency of lighting. I hope that helps. Um, skin tones can easily be changed. I just noticed I, I actually, um, was that part of there, the original? Um, yeah, that was part of there. That was part of the original image. Um, skin tones um, can easily be changed. Um, if you want to change skin tones to be consistent with head replacements, you um, simply can use the, under colors, there is a hue and saturation option. Under the hue and saturation option, you will be able to adjust the, not just the skin tone, but also the the, the, the lightness of it, the darkness of it, the, the hue of it. So you'll be able to get it right to the destination image. hope that helps. If you have any questions, please just ask in the comments. Cheers.